Welcome back to Vinny's Aquatics. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. I want to thank all of you for all the support I've gotten. And today, we're going to talk about acrylic aquariums, how they're built, and what makes them fail. Aquariums have become some of the biggest attractions at the largest venues on the planet. Like, think of Walt Disney World, or the largest mall in Dubai or even the Georgia Aquarium that holds, get this, 6.3 million gallons of water. Imagine doing a water change on that. <laughs> Not me. These aquariums, just like our home aquariums, hold thousands of exotic sea animals in very demanding environments, all while putting us, the spectator, inches away from this marine life. Now, what's the single most important element of an aquarium that makes it possible for these behemoths to exist? Plastic. Yep, everybody's favorite, plastic. Specifically, polymethyl methacrylate, or PMMA, also known as acrylic, and sometimes it's plastic glass, or plexiglass. I've never heard plastic glass before. Acrylic is ideal for this application. Do me a favor, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, smash that notification bell. Thank you. Okay, so what makes acrylic such a great material for these giant aquariums we're seeing built? Well, I'll tell you. Acrylic is one of the clearest materials in the world. The weight of acrylic is less than half of that of glass with up to 17 times, 17 times the impact strength. Acrylic can also be heated and easily formed into curved shapes. Those curved shapes, as well as other shapes, can be bonded together to make massive continuous structures, such as cylinders and long wall expansions. It has a relatively low moisture absorption rate. Raw materials and fabrication costs are relatively low, and acrylic is way more forgiving than glass. It is out of alignment or not perfectly supported. I know what you're saying. You're saying, Vinny, if it's such a great material, why do acrylic aquariums sometimes fail? Even these really large ones. You know, when I was a kid, my parents used to move a lot. But I always found them. Okay, so acrylic does not come without its drawbacks. Now the engineer or whoever's building these tanks, they need to have a full knowledge and understanding of these drawbacks to successfully design, manufacture, and assemble an aquarium that will stand and support aquatic life for many years. Now, to ensure longevity, the typical large aquarium is designed with a factor of safety of 11 to 12. Now this may seem high, but when you consider the implications of one of these large aquariums failing, like we're about to see later in the video, and the sudden catastrophic event that occurs when they do fail, then you'll completely understand why you have to over-design these tanks. So what goes wrong to cause an acrylic aquarium to fail? Well, the main thing I see most of the time is it's poor bonding or gluing of the acrylic panels, creating a weak seam. Whether the parts you butt together are unsanded smooth enough or you just don't have enough glue, there's many reasons for that and that's the main reason I see these tanks fail. Also, improper installation can be a problem. If it's just a little too out of whack and there's too much pressure on it, on one side, you can pop one of those seams. Now, also the manufacturers of the acrylic panels, uh, some of them don't do a great job and it can result in an inferior strength and a stiffness. Plus, residual stress molded or formed into the panel during the manufacturing process can also cause a problem. Now, introduction of large gouges or notches, that can significantly increase the stress in the panel as well. Now, of course, unfortunately, these issues commonly do not reveal themselves during the inspection, assembly, or the initial setup stages. Further, when the actual failure event does occur, which is typically months to get this years after the installation, it is quick and catastrophic. You can say that again. The seamer crack, it opens nearly instantaneously without any warning. The phenomenon behind this is called creep rupture. 
the disentanglement of the molecules of the plastic over time as the stress level significantly below the yield strength. Yes, below the yield strength of the plastic. Now I'm going to show you guys, this is the part you've all been waiting for. Some of you may have seen these videos before, some of you may not, but here's a good sample of some very high profile, very big acrylic tanks that have failed. And we got it on video. Let's go to the videotape. First one we're going to look at is the Orient Shopping Center in Shanghai. This aquarium failed two years after the installation, injuring 15 people and killing several sharks and turtles. The tank was constructed with six inch thick acrylic panels to hold 33 tons of water. The tank failed catastrophically without any warning on December 27, 2012. Then we have the Gulfstream Casino in Hallandale Beach, Florida. The 14 foot diameter by 14 foot high cylindrical aquarium opened at a fabricated bonded seam. The acrylic panels were three inches thick. A seam opened instantaneously releasing thousands of gallons of water. After the event occurred, a quick thinking maintenance person stuffed the crack with cloth napkins, saving all the aquatic life except for one shark. This failure was a result of poor bonding of a vertical seam. Next up, the Dubai Mall, the world's largest aquarium. Now this is home to more than 33,000 fish, including 400 sharks and stingrays. Now the aquarium, it formed a crack on February 25th, 2010. The 2.5 million gallon aquarium, that's just impossible to say, contains the world's largest single piece of acrylic, measuring at 2.5 feet in thickness. A crack formed at the interior viewing tunnel, resulting in a significant amount of water loss, but the crack was quickly repaired and there was no loss of aquatic life. Now we head to Mazatlan, Mexico at an amusement park. The large crack formed instantaneously in a three inch thick curved overhead viewing panel on February 3rd, 2017, shortly after the aquarium had closed for the day. The 1.2 million gallon aquarium housed 13 large sharks at the time of the failure. The crack released over three quarters of the water in the aquarium, but it turned out to be a good thing because it allowed for the safe removal of the sharks. Now this crack, this crack initiated at a large gouge mark, a nice scrape at the exterior of the tank. Yeah, they hit it in the back thinking uh, no one's going to see it. Good job. Here's the last one. T-Rex at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. On March 17, 2014, just as dinner was being served at the T-Rex restaurant at Walt Disney World, a vertically bonded seam, here we go again, opened instantaneously in a large cylindrical aquarium. The aquarium was located adjacent to the dining tables, resulting in a number of people becoming drenched. The opening was approximately three feet long, giving employees time to transfer fish to other aquariums located on the grounds. This employee that got into the tank, like I said before, this guy is a hero. All right, this is how you step up. This is some action taken right here.
Okay, let's wrap this up with a nice little bow on top. Acrylic, acrylic is an excellent material for both small, large, and gargantuan size aquarium. This type of plastic has the appropriate mechanical properties, the right clarity, design and manufacturing freedom required for these aquariums to perform without fail for 20 years or more. However, it's a big however, without special attention given to its creek properties, manufacturing quality, and the care during installation and the maintenance, a sudden catastrophic failure can occur and has occurred, as we just saw. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned something about acrylic and its properties and acrylic aquariums. And I can't wait to see you next time. I'm Finney's Aquatics. Woo!